Hello, welcome back to the PLSQL tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, we are going to discuss about uh, control structure. Right? So, we are going to discuss about control structure. So, I'm going to basically give you a lot of examples. And before that, I just want to find out why we are going to need any control structure in any programming language. Let's say we we have a question to solve that we want to give, like now we have an employee table in our database, assuming that we are following the same thing that what we discussed in our previous videos, that we have an employee table, and employee table we have employee number, name, salary, job, hire date, and all this, all this information. We are storing all this employee's information in this table called EMP. Then what we are giving is that, give a salary hike to employees, and what is that, how much hike they are going to get based on this rule. That means you give 50% hike whose job description is manager and their current salary is less than 2500 And no hike if their salary is more than 2500 Give 20% salary rise to people who are, whose job description is clerk and the current salary is less than 1000 So basically what I am giving you here, the problem with content conditional or selection control that means if you if you have something then do something and if not something then do something and so on so this is basically so basically we are taking alternative actions that means some give somebody 50 percentage hike give something 20 percentage give something zero percentage depending on circumstances depending on what he is a manager or he's a clerk or his salary is more than 2500 or his salary is less than 1000 and so on okay and then we are choosing one right so this is basically the rationale behind control structure is to give some kind of like take some actions based on some circumstances. There are three ways in Oracle in PLSQL language you can do all this thing. The number one is selection. In this video, we are going to discuss about selection and lot of examples, and then we are going to discuss about iteration and sequence. So with this, these three combined together consist of PLSQL control structures. And I have taken this one, this diagram from diagram and a lot of examples in this video from Oracle PLSQL 11.0 release guide. And that is the excellent documentation to give, to see what kind of examples and then, you know, what kind of different things that we have in PLSQL. So I, I strongly recommend you guys to go there and then see this guide and give us examples. Okay, if you do not have time in this next 10 minutes, I'm going to very quickly take you the essence of those examples. Okay. So let's the first example is simple if then statement. Okay. So basically what I'm declaring here, I declared a couple of variables, right? And then the variable, one of the variable called sales, and the value is 10,100. Okay. Then in the, in the begin and end session, I'm saying that I'm giving this condition if sales is greater than quota plus 200. So what is the quota? Is 10,000. So quota plus 2,000 in 10,200. And I'm saying that if sales, that means if 10,100 is greater than 10,200, the answer is no, false, right? So that means if the if this condition is not going to be satisfied, then it is the the control is directly go to line number 13. Okay, so in this case, I'm not doing anything. I'm just getting out of my if and then. So this is what is the idea of an if and then. Okay? So if something, then do, and then end it. So these are the syntax of PLSQL that you need to know that whenever you give if, you need an expression, expression which is evaluate to a boolean value, and then you give then. There's no comma, nothing, but in end if you need to give a semicolon. So let's try to uh, do the second example. The first one we give a very simple example, if then. Okay. So now we are going to do if then else. That means if something, then do something. If this is false or if this is not valid, then you do else and do something else and then complete the end. So this is the if end if block. Okay. So this is the if end if block. Inside that if end if, I have I can have Multiple, you know, if and if. Just nested, you know, I can, I can, I can nest 
if and if multiple times depending on whatever whatever way i want we want to give so, so some example okay let's take a look in this case in this case again sales quota and then sales is 12100 and then this value is 12200 so therefore it is therefore this is false and if it's false then it's going to line number 10 because it's going to go to the else block and then i set the value of bonus is 50 this bonus was is 50 now and then end if and then i'm going to update this so let's say instead of sales is like number 82 instead of value this 1200 this thing i just don't give anything if i do not give anything that means sales by default has a value called null okay so now we are going to come here sales that means null null is greater than something so whenever you are trying to compare null with something the value will be always false because i do not know like you know, null means nothing I, we don't know right so just do a, a very quick math okay so null greater than 10 this condition will return me always false 15 greater than 10 this is going to give me true 10 greater than 15 this is going to give me false that means what I'm what I'm saying here is that if there is something called null and we are trying to put that in our expression and try to compare, we cannot get anything and and that is basically returning false. Therefore, if I don't have anything, then I am going to set the bonus to 50 because that is equivalent to the condition to, to set to false. So this is what if then else. Okay. The next one is that as I told you that I you know if my if and end if is like here. I can also have another if and end if. Uh, that also, in fact, that also can contain another else also. Okay. So this is an example. If sales is more than this, then bonus is that. Else, if this condition is not true, then I'm going to, if sales is more than quota, then this, then again, another line, if this condition is not true, then I'm going to set bonus is equal to zero. So that means inside this if and if, in the else block, I'm going to have a inner if and end if. Okay, so this is outer if and if, and this is inner if and if. Okay, so that is inside this uh, block, uh, inside inside this else else and else. Okay, so this way I'm going to do nested if then and else. Next example. If you see this condition this is a little, little bad to write like inside an if block then say for example i want to write another if block here okay inside this else then this almost almost is going to it, 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 it will take to this program to a point where it is very unreadable and definitely you know it's not really good programming practice to write something that is so complicated that's what oracle comes up with new structure called if then else if okay the same program, whatever we wrote here, can be rewritten using. Uh, essentially, I've, I've taken another example here, but we can do like you know, if sales is greater than fifty thousand, then some bonus. If sales is greater than thirty-five thousand, then take something, and so on. Okay. So let's say the sales is now sixty thousand. The sales is sixty thousand. Then this condition is going to satisfy. If this condition is going to satisfy, then the next time is going to go is go directly to line number thirty. Okay, it's not going to go even though this condition also satisfied because once a condition is satisfied then it's going to go, come out the if and end if block okay so that means but however if i want to send forty thousand, so forty thousand. so first thing is this condition is not satisfied so therefore it comes to else block and else block yeah this condition is satisfied so therefore it comes to else block and then it's immediately going to jump to the line number 14 line number 13. so that is how if then else if statement works okay then we can extend that if then statement like okay so it looks like you know there's multiple if else if here okay so so before like you know in this previous example we give you if then else if so here we we extend that if then else else if to multiple things okay so to basically this is the syntax from line number six to line number 18 is very self-explanatory if grade is A, then do something, else if do something, else if do something, else if do, and so on. And if nothing happens out of this, then do this by default. 
and get out of this block. Okay. So this is basically whatever you see, it's an extension of the previous statement what we saw, what, what we have seen here. Okay. Then, you know, again, like, you know, if you see if else if and all those things, that's another elegant way to handle those, all those things. That is by doing case statement. So basically what you do, we case, and then we write the variable, and then we write multiple when conditions. Okay. Then also we'll always keep one element, which is if nothing will happen, if nothing will happen in this when, then it is going to come to this else and then make the default call. So same, basically same thing can be done using simple get statement. Okay, well, so now we introduce this thing with a problem. Uh, now we give you a lot of structure, a lot of structure, a lot of way that you can solve this if, then, and all this condition. Now let's try to solve this problem to wrap it with, to wrap up. Okay, so my thing is that I'm going to find out first what is the job description and what is its current salary. And then based on that, I'll write a couple of if else, if then, if and if conditions. And this is exactly what I'm doing here. I have I, I, I selected from my from the EMP table, salary and job, the salary and job and salary, and then I put a temporary variable, v underscore job, v underscore sal. Then I'm sending a when. Basically, I use a case statement. Why use a case statement? Because I have multiple things to do, right? The case, when job is, is equal to manager, then do this thing. And again, here I'm using if and if. Again, under if and if. And then, finally, I get out of this case. And if nothing happens, right? And basically, what I did is, like, now if, if the job is manager and his salary is less than 2,500, then I'm giving this B underscore S something. Initially, B underscore raise is null. Okay. Then, whatever way I do, I try to put a value for B underscore raise. If B underscore raise is more than zero, then I, I do this V underscore new cell is equal to, I, I compute what is the V underscore new cell based on the, what is the value of B underscore raise. And this is the expression to compute V underscore new cell. And then I'm going to finish this. So this is how you use if then if then else if to to basically select select different things. The logic is that it should be a condition which will be returned either true or false. Based on that, it's action one, action two. So this is what is the example of your SQL control structure using selection. Thank you.